making a hundred thousand dollars a month. Okay. I was still living like a student, you know, back when I was like 22 or 23 years old, I was making a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. In one month, I still live like uh, on a thousand dollars a month kind of expenses, you know? Okay. So I don't really need to be a billionaire. Okay. Now, but I want, I want to want to be a billionaire. I don't want to be a billionaire because I know that even if I become a billionaire, it's like, Well, very good afternoon, friends, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I have this rare opportunity to interview young entrepreneur, Edric Ong. But before, before we start, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Kelvin Quack from G Code Consultancy. I'm a corporate strategist and management consult consultant helping in the restructuring, management, strategic planning, marketing, and branding of companies both locally and Asia Pacific region. One of my important tasks, which many companies have immensely benefited from, is to help them reorganize their human resources through a human profiling system called the fingerprint analysis system. A scientific approach to discover your true self, strengths and weaknesses, and how to understand, communicate, and manage people more effectively. In this way, they are able to put the right people in the right place, doing the right job. I'm also helping individuals to decipher their genetic code so that they can unleash their hidden potential. Now, let me have the honor to introduce Edric Ong. Edric is an inspiring, kind, and passionate teacher who helped many people achieve success through his unique and selfless sharing of his vast knowledge in the area of branding, sales, digital marketing technology to reach where he is today. Edric, though Young has successfully interviewed top entrepreneurs, influencers, professionals, celebrities, and six, seven, and eight figures millionaires. He's full of drive, positive energy, and full of charisma. Let's welcome Edric. Hi, thank you for having me on this interview. Yeah. Thank you. It's my honor. Edric, I was thinking at this young age of just 25. You are already a successful. So what is your plan for next 10 to 20 years? Hmm. Okay. So like last time, I told myself that I want to be a billionaire. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like, I because I always thought that, okay, the epitome of entrepreneurship, right? Like, like to me, entrepreneurship is just a game. To me, business is a game. Okay. okay. And to me, it was like, oh, the the highest level of this game is to be a billionaire or to IPO a company. So I always thought that, okay, I wanted to be a billionaire or IPO a company. Right. And then one day I realized, right, that actually nowadays, uh, I don't know why, people hate on billionaires. Like, oh, really? Okay. Like there are so many socialist people or something, okay, right. hate on billionaires and they think that, oh, Elon Musk is the worst, the most evil person or Jeff Bezos is the most evil person, causes uh, Amazon employees to break their backs and all that, right? <laughs> and, and this is something really sad about human beings, okay? Is that most people are not actually happy about other people's success, okay? For example, like sometimes, like there was one night I was playing Monopoly with my friends, okay? And I won. And apparently, right, like I was supposed to be happy about winning, right? But everyone else was like, oh, okay, congratulations for winning, right? you know? Like that kind of stuff. And I was like, hey, actually, people don't really, like people might say that they, they don't hate success and everything, right? But, but they do, okay? Most people do. And even I myself, okay? Sometimes I look at another another speaker that uh, is rising up and I'm like, oh, this guy, blah, blah, blah. You know, I, I, I watch thoughts that come to my mind and I realize that, hey, actually, I also have the same, like, it's, it's, it's a very human thing, okay? Mm -hmm. So I ask myself, do I really, really want to be a billionaire? Because, okay, like, for example, right now, I've been traveling the world for the last nine months, okay? My mm -hmm. network has still been increasing while traveling the world, okay? That's I'm traveling the world sustainably. I only work about maybe one day a week. I only work every Tuesdays. Now maybe I'm increasing to maybe Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays because I'm launching a new funnel. So I'm, I, I, I work. But for the last nine months, I've only been working one day a week. Okay, my net worth is still increasing. Okay, my last three years in business, I never had a month I made less than ten thousand dollars a month before. Okay, oh. so, 
and I calculated all my lifestyle expenses, right? Okay. It's not more than uh, $3,000 USD. Okay. Even if I stay in, let's say, America, USA, okay, a very expensive country, I spend about maybe three or $4,000. Okay. Not more than $4,000. Okay. If I go to a country like Ecuador, okay, I can, you know, my, my expenses are pretty low, right? I could stay in Ecuador for, like if, let's say I don't make a single cent more, okay? Just with the current money I have, I could stay in Ecuador for three, for 30 years uh, and I still will be able to survive, okay? I could stay in a country like, let's say America or Spain right. for 10 years, okay? Even if I don't make a single cent more, but I'm still making money, uh, right? But even wow. if I don't make a single cent more, I still can survive, right? Wow. But I don't need money for the sake of money anymore. Like I don't, I don't, like, okay, I, I'm not saying that I spend super lavishly and I buy yachts and all, like yachts and big houses and all this kind of stuff, right? But I have everything that I really need to live the, the life that I want, okay? So, uh, so having more money won't, won't change my lifestyle much, okay? In fact, last time I was making $100,000 a month, okay? I was still living like a student, you know? Back when I was like 22 or 23 years old, I was making $100,000, okay, in one month. I still live like uh, on a thousand dollars a month kind of expenses, you know. Okay, so I don't really need to be a billionaire. Okay, now, but I want I want to want to be a billionaire. I don't want to be a billionaire because I know that even if I become a billionaire, it's actually not that great and not that successful. It's like it is like even when I reach reach there, I realize that people hate on me and all that. So like, and and and, and if you really think about it, do billionaires really have freedom? Like for me, I value freedom a lot. Okay, like let, let me ask you. Mark Zuckerberg might be rich, but does Mark Zuckerberg have freedom? Can he do anything that he wants? He doesn't really have Definitely freedom. Not. Right? Definitely he has to answer to investors. He has to answer to shareholders. He has to answer to the government. He has to answer to customers. He has to answer to advertisers. He has to answer to everybody. Okay? Yes. Elon Musk, is he really free? Right? He, he, he might be financially free, but is he really free? Okay? Or Bill Gates and all these people, are they really free? Like for me, I value freedom a lot. I, for me, I, I want to run my business like a lifestyle business that even if I... I, I don't work right. You know, I got so much of free time. You know, I, people don't need to rely on me and this kind of stuff. Okay. Now, right. I don't actually want to be a billionaire. Okay. Like, do I really want to be a Jack Ma and IPO company and have to deal with all this kind of hate? Like, there's a lot of billionaires have billionaire problems. Everyone has problems. Okay. Billionaire had millionaire problems. Billionaire got billionaire problems. Poor people got poor people problems. Everyone got problems. Okay. It's what kind of problems you're going to have. Right. So, I don't really actually want to be a billionaire. But, I want to want to be a billionaire. For example, I want to have the desire to be a billionaire. I want to have the ambition to be a billionaire because having this drive, having this desire makes me want to grow more, makes me want to uh, achieve more. Make sense? Right. So it makes me feel more driven. It makes me feel more masculine. And this allows me, like just having the goal of wanting to be a billionaire makes me more masculine, makes me more driven, makes me more motivated. So I want to want to be a billionaire, but I don't actually want to be a billionaire. Yeah. So if you ask me what's the 10, 20 years, of course, like I I I I position my business in a way that it's it's possible to become a billionaire. For example, I've been acquiring a lot of companies, I own seven small businesses now and all this kind of stuff, right? But at the same time, I rather have a business that just passively makes me 20k per month. That's more than enough for me, you know, but but passive, passive. Like not active income, but passive, passive. Passive as in like. Like for me right now, I just send one email, which I don't even send the email myself, but I already have the email list. My, my, my team member uh, sends the emails for me and schedules the WhatsApp reminder, set up the Zoom room, all that for me, and I make money, right? And I pay him a, a, a sum of money as well, right? So that's passive, passive. Like I can literally be sleeping, like literally most of the time I'm sleeping while he's doing that, right? So, so that, that's, 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 that's my plan, like to make 20K per month in passive, passive income, okay? Not active, because uh, I've made hundred k money in active income before, but I'm not interested in that anymore. I would rather make twenty k per month passive, right? Okay, okay. And uh, yeah, so that's the that's the plan, uh, to still want Thank to you. be there, but make twenty k per month passive income. Okay. Thank you for sharing, Ajit. In fact, uh, your kind of lifestyle is what a lot of people are looking for. I mean, you are free to travel, free to do what you want. At the same time, I mean, you 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 actually work one 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 day in a week. I mean, that's amazing. Really, that's amazing. I mean, at that young age, can't believe that. I mean, there's a lot. A lot of people are dreaming to have a kind of lifestyle. Really, yeah. really, really interesting. Okay. Yeah. So my next question is that, uh, of course, over the years, there are a lot of challenges that you face 
in this journey? And my question is, is it worth the effort and sacrifices? Definitely, yeah. <laughs> so like, okay, f- first of all, I never ever felt like it was work. Okay, oh, like for okay. example, okay. I really enjoy speaking. I really enjoy yeah. doing seminars. I really enjoy selling. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, okay. I, I don't really enjoy doing sales calls, but I really enjoy standing on stage. Um, I really enjoy closing the deal. I don't really enjoy showing up to the sales call, but I enjoy closing the deal. I enjoy making the money, you know? Yeah. So I really enjoy, like, okay. I, I really, really enjoy doing business, okay? I really enjoy learning, coaching, doing sales, sales speaking and all that, okay? So it never feels like work to me, okay? Like you asked me, would I rather... Like, 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 I really get a kick uh, or a high, right, from closing a $5,000 deal over the phone, you know? Yeah. When the money hits my account or what, right? That It's not the money. Eh. It's not about the $5,000. It's about, hey, in 30 minutes, I made $5,000. It's about the, hey, I developed the skill set to do that, you know? It's about, yeah. So, so I really enjoy the process and, and I really enjoy the growth from it, you know? So it, it never, ever, ever felt like work to me. Okay. And for me, entrepreneurship has always been quite a relatively smooth sailing journey in the sense that a lot of people say, oh, entrepreneurship is very lonely and all that. No, I never felt entrepreneurship to be lonely. I always had a lot of friends in entrepreneurship. I did a lot of business friends, a lot of billionaires, multi-millionaires, celebrities, etc. become my friends, you know. I went for a lot, yeah, I went, met a lot of business people. So it has never been a lonely journey for me. I've never lost money from doing business before. None of the business I've run, I've, I've run five businesses my, myself and then own equity in other businesses. I've never lost money running any of the businesses before. And because of how I, I structure the deal and all that is that it's almost, in, like if you start a business without money, you can't lose money running a business, you know? Yeah, anyway. So, yeah, so, so, so like there has not been much of a cost to me for running a business. And in terms of the value it has given me, I mean, I, I scaled a business to a, you know, yeah, 1,700 clients, um, you know, I run so many businesses, own a few businesses. Like, in terms of the value it has given me, it has given me freedom, it's given me money, it's given me time, it's given me lifestyle, it's given me um, respect, it's given me, it's given me so much. Yeah, so, so that there's no, that, okay, so like, okay, like when I first started doing business, okay, like when I first started doing speaking, I used to speak four times a week. Most speakers speak once every two weeks, okay? Right, right. right. I speak four times a, a week. Every, almost every two days, I, I speak one time, okay? Because most other speakers, they cannot market enough leads uh, to speak to, uh, you know, uh, to once, like four times a week, right? They, they normally every, they do a preview once every two weeks or once a month, okay? Yeah. I was speaking once every two weeks, you know, uh, once every two days. But I really enjoyed the, I really enjoyed every session of speaking i really enjoyed myself improving you know at one point i went to malaysia right i did five seminars in two days you know at, yeah saturday and sunday i go to malaysia 10 a.m i do one seminar 1 p.m i do one seminar 7 p.m i do another seminar on saturday sunday 1 p.m and 7 p.m another seminar you know five seminars back to back to back you know right I'm no speaker really speak good. five I'm times good. in two days one no speaker does that one no one right. that, yeah but I enjoyed the process, you know. I enjoyed the, the process of mastery and all that. So there's there's it has never been a sacrifice for me. To me, it was always it was it was a asymmetric risk reward. Starting a business to me has always been an asymmetric risk reward. Yeah. So actually, um what people say is true. I mean, if you if you take your job as your passion, then it, you won't find any challenges. I mean, challenge there is, but you don't find that you're sacrificing anything, but in fact. You're actually enjoying it at All the right. same time. Okay, so I want to add one thing. Uh, is that <laughs> like I I I I I don't like to do sales calls until today. Okay, actually, I really like I like it really screws up my schedule. For example, let's say I want to go out and then I have to do, do a sales call, so I have to be, you know to get ready for the sales call and all that sort of stuff. And I didn't like to do appointments as well. But last time when I first did appointments, right? Okay, like. I know it's like, okay, work, work with your passion and it should be your passion and all that, right? But there are some mm-hmm. things in life, right, that is not 100% what you like to do. For example, there are some things in life that you have to force yourself to do it, okay? So like when I first learned sales, I forced myself to do sales, okay? I was meeting four appointments a day, 1 p.m., 3 p.m., 5 p.m., 7 p.m. Every day, six days a week, I was doing four appointments a week, okay? That's 24 appointments a, uh, that's 24 appointments a, a week, okay? 
in one in 10 months, right, I met over a thousand appointments and I built a team of 140 people in 10 months. Okay. Now, but did I enjoy that? I honestly didn't enjoy that process, but I knew that it would have been worth it to do those appointments so that I learned sales. So that next time, if I want to be a coach or I want to be a speaker or I want to, like, I knew that sales was an important skill that I wanted to master. Okay. Right. So I forced myself to do that. Okay. It's just like most people will not enjoy going to the gym but you need to force yourself to go to the gym, okay? Yeah. I don't like to brush my teeth, but every day I still brush my teeth because I know if I don't brush my teeth, it'll decay. I don't yeah. like to read, okay? I actually hate to read. The only books I read are business books or personal development books. But I know that I need to read, if not, my mind will decay, right? So in life, it's not about what we like or don't like to do, it's about what works, okay? Of course, if you like what you do, that's a bonus, okay? But don't expect life to be something that you like to do and all that, okay? I realize that in life, right, if you can like 70% of your life, is good enough. It's very hard to like 100% of your life. You know, yeah. But it's good that I mean, I you you know who you are, and you know your strength, your weaknesses. I'm very sure. I mean, you things that you you excel. I mean, you know your 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 so called your 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 strength. You, you excel in it, but uh, you know that certain things you it's not for you because not everybody is born in such way that they are certain talent. You know, you if you know your your talent and you improve on it, then you can be very super. I think that's very interesting. Yeah, earlier you mentioned that uh, you have you have built up 107, 1,700 clients. May I know how long does it take? Does it take for you to build uh, such a client base? So I started in twenty eighteen, right? Yeah. By twenty twenty one, yeah, about three years, two and a half years, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. that's yeah. impressive. Okay. Um, Another question I want to ask you because I always find that you are always very energetic, you know, positive, engaging, and very inspiring most of the time. What actually gives you the kind of energy to do it? Hmm, good question. Okay, so for example, like <laughs> right now, I don't feel like very high energy because it's 9 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> insane, and I don't really like to wake up early in the morning. Okay, like, yeah. yeah. But if you ask me, where does my energy come from? Okay, honestly, I don't know. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I, I could say a few factors. Okay. Number one is that my mom has very high energy as well. Okay. okay. So my mom, right, she runs her own business. Okay. She's doing six figures per month. Okay. okay. In sales. And she's been running this business for 10 or 11 years. Okay. And almost every day, right, at least for the first five years in business, even until now sometimes, okay, she works from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. six days a month. Okay, that's 16 hours a day, that's six days a week. Most people work eight hours a day, maybe 10 a.m. Yeah. to 8, 6 p.m. or something, or 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., one lunch break in between. She works yeah. 7 a.m. to 11 p.m., six days a week. Her only rest day is Monday, okay? So she is full of energy. She she sell, okay, may, okay, maybe because she sells this like health and wellness Ref22 products, like her okay. own products, right? So she has to be at the top of her own product, you know. So you can go and Google rev22.com, R-E-V-22.com. Or her product okay. is called Energia, okay. E-N-E-R-G-I-A dot S-G, okay? okay. And she sleeps on those pillows and mattresses every day. And she says that that's the reason why she's so energetic, uh, okay. I'm not sure, okay. Maybe. <laughs> it could be genetic, okay. Like maybe I, I got it from my mom. Like because she's very passionate about sales. She's very passionate about her business. She's very, very passionate, okay? Every living, breathing moment she thinks about is business and health and all this kind of stuff. Okay. So that could be one reason. Maybe it's from my mom. Second reason I could be positive could be because of my parents, the fact that they have shown me a lot of love ever since I was young, okay? So that's something I've been very blessed with. Like, like my dad... My mom, they'll, they'll tell me that they love me and all that, you know, which most parents, they actually don't tell their kids, I realize, like when I ask my friends and all that, right? So my dad, yeah, he, he has shown me a lot of love since young and all that, right? And and built a lot of self-esteem in me since young, okay? So like since young, I've always been a confident person, okay? Like I've always wanted to speak on stage. I've always, like I, yeah, I've always had, I have always been a person with self high self-esteem because of how my parents raised me, okay? Um. But not all my siblings have super high self-esteem, okay? Like, some do, some don't, you know, like, yeah. I'm not, I'm not who to judge or what, but, like, we are raised by the same parents, but we grew up very, very differently as well. 
So I think because having high self-esteem and, and being having a lot of love, because I've received a lot of love, and whether you say love from God and the universe and all that, and because I've received a lot of love, it's easy for me to give love. Okay? I'm someone that can give love very easily. Like you can see, like, yeah, in the group chats and everything, like, I'm always still adding value. Like, people can pay me, like, only $500, uh, maybe three years ago, uh, and until today, I'm still adding value, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah someone give a lot. Yeah, you, yeah. you really give a lot, yes. Be- be- because to me, I feel that whenever I give, I get more. You know what I mean? Like, not, not because, like, oh, but, like, I just the giving alone, not from getting from them, you know, but giving alone gives me value. Make sense? Like when yeah. I add, when I give, just just the fact that it, it, I give it right, right, it increases my energy. Makes sense. Oh, Every time yeah. I do an interview, okay, or I or I share like that, I'm getting more yeah. energy. Like you realize that I'm actually getting more energy while I'm talking yeah. to you than before, yeah. right? Yeah. Every time yeah. I do a Zoom session, okay, I'm getting more energy. The more I speak, the more I speak, the more energy, the more energy I give, the more energy I actually get. You know, yeah. I can do yeah. sometimes. Uh, I can do like a. I can don't sleep for one whole night, right? Okay. After that, I do one, I can do two seminars back to back, okay? And I still feel full of energy. Eh? Yeah. Sometimes like, after I do a seminar, I, I'm so much of energy that I, I can't really sleep, you know? Yeah. Or, or, or yeah. But sometimes like, I, even if I sleep, right, it's a fulfilled kind of tired. It's like, because I know I've given my best, I've been the best instrument I can be. Then when I go and sleep, right, I, I, I fall deep into sleep and okay. it feels like I, I wake up fully energized again because of how I know that I've been useful to society and all this kind of stuff, right? So just giving gives me energy, okay? Yes. Mm, so, yeah, okay. Um, what else? Like, I, I, I should be watching my diet and my sleep and all that, but I haven't really been doing that, okay? Um, yeah, but I should be, okay? So I recommend, like, if you want to, like, hey, so a tip for anyone who wants to check their energy and all that, this is what you do, okay? Every day, you track your energy, okay? You track your energy at different times of the day, okay? And then, you have an Excel spreadsheet, right? You track your energy Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, right? And then you track what kind of exercise do you do? What kind of diet do you have? And what kind of sleep? Exercise, diet, sleep, okay? And then, you track, right? Like, okay, if I did this, I had more energy the next day or the same day, okay? After a while, you'll find a correlation, a pattern for yourself, okay? And then, you stick to that to continuously have that energy. Make sense? Yeah. Yes. And a lot of times you also realize that motivation, like for me, I've always been very intrinsically motivated. I've not been motivated, like I've never been motivated by making a million dollars or making a, a billion dollars, okay? But I've always been intrinsically motivated. There was just a compass in me, okay? Because I'm motivated based on my values and all that, right? So there's always been a compass in me that just draws me towards my my values. For example, my value is number one, freedom. Number two, growth. Number three, adding value to people. Number four, love. Number five, you know, etc. So because I have all these and I prioritize my values, I always do decisions that bring me closer towards my values intrinsically because, and I did this coaching session, I believe I uploaded it on YouTube before on how to know what you value, how to get clarity on what you value. Because once you know what you value, okay, you can make any, you can make a decision very easily. A lot of times people cannot decide, right? Because they don't know what they value. But if let's say you, you know what you value, right? If let's say as an organization, you run an organization and your whole team knows what you value, right? It's very easy for them to make a decision on your behalf as well. Even if you're not around, you can tell them, okay, I want you all to always prioritize uh, customer first, followed by employee, or, you know, or I want you to prioritize customer satisfaction first, followed by employee uh, satisfaction, followed by making money or something like that, right? And then they can make a decision very easily because they, 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 they know what your values are. Yeah, so clarity, creates alignment alignment creates acceleration okay yeah okay um just a matter of curiosity yeah earlier you mentioned that at one stage um you were in malaysia and you did uh five seminars in two days yeah and, and right now um you, you mentioned that you only work actually once a week but why yeah. why there's a, such a drastic difference is there any reason behind? Because I'm like semi-retired now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually retired about two years ago. Yeah. So like, okay. like I'm semi I'm semi-retired now. So like now I'm just living life, man. Yeah. I I'm I'm not hustling as hard as I used to. Okay. 
but okay, but 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 here's the thing, uh, I don't recommend this for everybody. I don't recommend like anyone to like, oh, at 25, you okay, but here's the thing, okay. Because okay, I know that this is my lifestyle expenses, and this is how much of money I can potentially make. Okay. So this is a knot that I can dial down, okay. So long uh, because I know that it's, it's still it, it's a knot that I can dial down. I know it is a knot that I can dial up and dial, dial down. If I want to make more money, I just do more sales calls, do more seminars, uh, work harder. I know I'll make more money, right? So because I'm in a position where I work, okay, I, I started, okay, let's say this, this, this is where I, I need to be, right? But I started from here. But I whoa, 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 right? And I didn't just work until here and I stopped. I worked until I was here, like maybe here, and then I stopped. So now even when I dial back down, I'm still okay. You get what I mean? But if yes. let's say I reach a danger zone or something like that, then I I I, I dial it back up, you know? You back up again. Yeah. So so and I explain to you why, because like if I ask myself, like when I look back at my 20s, right, would I rather say that I made a 10 million dollars or would I rather say I traveled the world? I think I would have been more proud of myself, like not for other people, but just for myself. I think I would be more proud of myself traveling the world. Yeah. Great. I think uh you really have a very clear vision and you're, you're actually enjoying while you're still young. That's what people say. I mean, you can work very hard until you're old, you retire, maybe at age 65, then you start mm. to travel. But then the question is, are you able to move? Correct. Even if you can move, are you able to enjoy? I mean, this is, this is amazing, really. Yeah. Amazing. It's mm. like, <laughs> okay, uh, I think today that's all I have for you. Thank you so much, Edric, for, for this interview and wishing you success, more successes in whatever you endeavor. Thank you Thank for you. having me on the interview. Thank you very much. Thank you.